back to the channel. Today's video is brought to you by, I should stop wandering around on Facebook Marketplace. You should see the piece of shit that I picked up. Amazing, isn't it? Let me bring you a little closer here and I'll show you what I ended up with. So what we got here is some sort of Razor brand electric kids go-kart. Uh, I do sort of fit on it, so. Um, I ended up getting the thing for, I don't know, or 20, 25 bucks. It actually works. They said works, just didn't have a charger with it. I just happened to have a bunch of, I had a Razor scooter which had the same 24 volt charger. So I threw it on there and it does move. Um, maybe I'll just record the, watch this. So before uh, any of you smart Alex out there comment about, you know, the fact that it's running slow is because there's a 200 pound senior citizen riding it, which is probably part of it, but nevertheless, put my nephew on it and it's pretty slow even the grandson was on it and it's pretty slow so it's obvious the batteries are bad so what would you do if you had to spend 30 bucks on a set of batteries on amazon or you have a 3d printer and probably 200 bucks worth of milwaukee 18 volt batteries well yeah anybody with a lack of brain cells would stick to 200 bucks worth of batteries in that thing and probably end up blowing it up so that's what we're gonna do well we're gonna try anyways so uh put the link down this is some somebody on uh thingiverse printed this drew up this little uh, uh holder for the batteries um which is awesome i'll put a link in the comments on it but we're gonna solder this up and then we'll dismantle the cart Whoosh. We'll dismantle that, see what it's going to take to uh, just tap in, hook these uh, 36 volts worth of battery into this thing versus I think it's 24. So maybe it'll go up in a cloud of smoke. From what I read on the interwebs, it should be okay. Um, so let's give it a shot. Let's get the soldering iron fired up. All right, now that we got figured out what we're going to, what the plan is, get started here. I already crimped a couple of the connectors here set them into the um, 3d printed uh, holder and you know made sure that we had some contact and that seems to be fine um, so I'll take these back apart I'm actually gonna solder these up um, solder these up and then final assemble these things they're held together with a it's like five uh, it's like three millimeter screws um, and nuts we'll put them together That'll be that. We'll check good batteries in them, make sure they unlatch and latch, and then test voltage at the output and make sure that's right. And then we'll put the golf cart up on the table and tear that thing apart. So let's get the soldering. Necessary, but I don't know. I like uh, soldering my crimped connections. Helps you sleep better at night, I guess. Um, if you're doing this, obviously you want to get the positive and negative on the right side. It actually on these Milwaukee's. I don't know if it's true on all of them, but it's actually got the polarity marked on the outside of the uh, battery edges. So it goes like this. Positives on this side here, positives there. Kind of neat. And all I'm doing is just heating this up so I can get the 
because I mashed the uh, mashed it down a little bit, just heating it up a little bit, pushing it down into the plastic a little deeper. Um, just because the way I got the connectors crimped there, probably would have a better way to do that, but yeah, this works. All right, so I'll take some screws out here and let's uh, get these bolted together tight. So we can actually test and see if we if it actually works. Be right back. Gonna go dig some screws out. All right, everything's soldered up or assembled. Woo, yeah, done. Nice. Okay, let's check voltage here. <laughs> negative, negative, positive, positive. Oh, okay. Well, it's working, but that's 20 volts. Obviously, 18 is a nominal voltage, but 20 and a half volts on that one. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. All right. Let's check the other one. Okay, so we got a polarity right, and uh, we got voltage, and wow, okay, that's a little bit of a concern. Not sure how long this is going to last, running that much voltage, I think, but you know what, we're going to find out. Um, worst case scenario, we burn up the controller. Best case scenario, we burnt the motor. But so let's get the go kart up on a stand here and um, take it apart and figure out and get these wired in. Pretty simple, you know. We won't even probably just put plugs on the original. I'm assuming that it's just blade connectors on the on the batteries already or on the connectors already there. So we'll just um, wire these in there the same and. See what happens. All right, looks like just a couple of uh, screws here, Allen head screws. Well, that's some pretty big batteries. Hmm, didn't expect to see that. Not a pretty healthy sized motor. What's this? One? You know, to see, maybe I can find some specifications on that motor. And there's the controller. Sorry, little guy. I'm gonna get a beat down. Um, so, okay, so let's just, uh, first eliminate any warning tags, because that'll make everything we do okay. Yeah, a little fuse here. I can reuse that on our new system. What the hell? So we're safe. So yeah, if we just put some uh, some male uh, blade connectors on our new battery setup, should be able to just put this into place. Maybe push these out. I don't know. So let's get the old batteries out of the way and maybe get a little spot for our wires to go through that cover. And let's just hook this thing up, see what happens. Um, and maybe clean some of the leaves out. Maybe clean a little bit of this up. Might as well look pretty before we blow it up. There's a thing on both of them will go like that, maybe, I guess. I don't know. Semi pro tip. Stuff a hot glue gun when you get something like this. And I'll just put a couple dabs of hot glue and tack these into place. And then I can just go ahead and drill the pilot and drive the screws into the plastic to hold them in place. So 
We'll call that a semi core it's kind of a pro tip. Uh, but kind of a helping hand. I like that. So let me get those in place, get them screwed down, and then we can do the wiring quick, which will be simple. And see what happens. Anybody else put a little shot of a uh, hot glue in your shrink or heat shrink uh, connectors? I do that. I don't know if it does any good, but I feel better about it sealing up tight. Maybe giving a little more security and making the wire not come out. I don't know. But that's what I do. Okay, here's how it's wired. Pretty straightforward. You got the positive and negative coming out of the cart. Um, negative over to the negative side of the first battery comes out positive through the fuse the fuse back into the negative on the second battery and then back out of the second battery positive to the positive coming out of the cart pretty straightforward um if you do get it wrong it'll go poof smoky smoky fire fire so um make sure you get it right the first time just for giggles, I don't know what the, just for giggles, I'm not sure what the voltage cutoff is on this thing. Um, so I'm gonna, I've got just one of the batteries wired into the thing. Um, let's see what that does. Oh, lights on. Right, so it doesn't have a minimum voltage cut off so that's interesting to know it'll run on 18 volts ran about as well as the other two 12s they're so bad but let's uh swear in the big one i am going to stick the fuse back in where the hell that's at. there it is so i get that wired in there too um just to i don't know just in case Dealing with lithium batteries and possible shorts, I guess a little safety third wouldn't hurt. All right, let's plug the batteries in here and see what happens. Um, the fuse block pointing straight up was not an accidental thing. It's intentional. My thoughts are sometimes when these things go uh, nuclear, they'll blow and stick wide open, depending on where the MOSFET is at when it's switching. So this way, if something does go haywire when I'm running it, I can just grab this and yank a cord or yank the wire and pull it apart. But here goes nothing. Watch for smoke. Okay. No smoky yet. Lit up. That's anticlimactic. All right, so let's get it on the ground and uh, we'll see what it does then on the ground with the 200 pound senior citizen on it. All right, test one, let's see if it moves. Well, there you go. You can wire up two 18-volt uh, Milwaukee batteries to a little Razor go-kart. Um, from a build standpoint, very cheap to do. Um, from a battery standpoint, very, very expensive. So unless you've got these batteries laying around, which I do, um, it would be kind of pointless. I would like to run it a little bit longer to see if the controller and the motor are being stressed at all. It didn't seem like it. Um, it's not like the motor's just screaming out of its mind. I'm wondering if some sort of a voltage knockdown or something going on inside the controller. 
um, or pre-controller before it runs through the circuitry. Um, it's expected from 24 to potentially 36 to 40 volts. That motor should be just screaming, and it doesn't seem to be doing that. So we would take it out for a little test run in the yard, but test the season. We've got that going on out there, so um, we'll have to wait till spring to do any real serious playing around out in the yard to see how it actually does long term. Um, and we'll address that, you know, this spring. We'll put the nephew on it because I ain't getting on that thing. I'm all crunched up in the thing. Um, put somebody else on it, somewhere smaller than me to go out and put some laps on it in the yard and make sure it's, you know, see how long the batteries last, see how the controller handles it and the motor handles it. So. We'll address that some other time, but there you go. Simple, quick, bam, bam project in and out and done. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.